Hey, it's Dan Zuko for Grayscale Gorilla. I've been playing around with these soft, inflated, plushy style models lately. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to inflate any 3D object inside Cinema 4D. So let's dive in. With Grayscale Gorilla Studio open and connected, go ahead and grab a model from the Happy Toolbox food pack. I'm going to use the ham. I'll download and send it straight into Cinema 4D. Now back inside Cinema 4D, scale the model up a hundred times. I found the cloth system behaves best when the object is around 200 centimeters. Next, drop the model into a subdivision surface, then place that inside a connect object. Finally, add a remesh to even out the topology. Use symmetric or flow lines to generate clean, continuous edge loops. Then create an editable copy by choosing connect objects. We'll use this duplicate as a reference for making our loop selections. Focusing on the reference object, press UL to make loop selections and work around the model, double clicking wherever you want the seams to be. Store the selection to make it easier to come back and make changes later. Now choose Edge to Spline, which converts all of your loop selections into a single spline. Go back to the remesh object and add a vertex map. Then drag the spline you just created into the vertex maps fields. Select the spline field and change the distance mode to radius and scale the radius down until we have really fine lines. And then invert the vertex map. Yellow is what will be inflated and red is what will be constrained. Pressing Command D on Mac or Control D on PC, let's open up our scene settings. Head to the simulations parameters and turn off gravity. Then adjust your dampening so the simulation settles quicker. Now let's add a cloth tag to our remesh and adjust some settings. These are the settings that I found work nicely. Target length controls how much the cloth tries to keep its original shape. So by increasing it to 110%, we're essentially adding 10% extra slack to the cloth, which gives us some nice crease and wrinkle details. Now head into the Balloon tab and add some overpressure. This controls how much air is used to inflate the object. Then in the Mix Animation panel, let's enable it and drop our vertex map in. Then press play. It looks like the vertex map isn't strong enough to constrain the cloth, so we'll need to increase its weight or tighten the fall off. There are a few ways to fix this, but I like using a curve layer. Right click to make the points linear, then tighten the curve essentially strengthening the red areas of the vertex map. Now when we simulate, the effect is much better. Make an editable copy of the last frame of the simulation. You can now turn off and hide everything else and delete the cloth and vertex map tags from the copy. To texture different parts of the original model, drop the mesh into a fracture object and set it to explode element. Press C to make it editable. Now we have separate parts to texture and refine. Now let's start composing the shot. Drop in a camera and add the Grayscale Gorilla social frame tag. Adjust the composition until you're happy with the framing. I think this looks good. Let's do a quick cleanup and add a protection tag to lock the camera in place. I'm also adding a GSG focus null from the utility scripts in case I want depth of field later. Enable snapping and snap the null to the object. Head back into Studio and let's grab a HDRI. Make the HDRI invisible and lower its saturation so it doesn't influence your colors. And then let's grab some materials. I've already saved a fabric I like in a playlist. Download it and right click to send it into C4D with Triplanar enabled. For static images, Triplanar is ideal for cloth sims if you don't want to spend time UV unwrapping the object. Inside the material, adjust the scale to your liking. I want to see the thread detail on this one. Let's drop a dome light in to use as our background. Disable all light contributions and leave only scene by camera set to one. Then set the color of your background. Back inside the material, let's add a color abs and a color correction node. Connect those up, select a color, and I like to add some level scale to make the color a little bit more punchy. Now duplicate the material and select another color. 
I've saved a few colors I like. Now drop the new material on the model. The model looks a bit dark on the right hand side, so let's duplicate the HDRI and rotate it. I'll also lower the intensity to keep it subtle. Finally, add a redshift object tag and enable tessellation to add subdivision and smooth out any jagged edges. And we are done. An inflated squishy ham. Let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you make.